Hi friends, I'm Scott Giles and welcome to Power Talk, my podcast here on Facebook Live and YouTube. I cover topics related to spirituality, hypno-coaching, and the hypnotic arts and sciences in general. If you'd like to know more about my professional work or sign up for my free e-newsletter, Powerlines, check out my website, which I'll tag at the end of this video. Today I want to talk about something you've probably only heard about if you've taken a college-level course in personality development. While this is something mental health professionals know all about, most others don't. And I think they should. It's called attachment theory. It began in the 1950s when psychologist Harry Harlow at the University of Wisconsin studied monkey infants. Some of the monkeys were isolated and provided with a stuffed version of a mother monkey. Harlow was able to manipulate the mother monkey puppet, so the baby monkeys had very different early experiences. Then he watched how the monkeys behaved when they grew up. Now, an article recently appeared in the Atlantic magazine, written by Faith Hill, a senior editor. The article recounted some of the current thinking on this study, and that's what triggered me to be interested in doing a podcast on this subject. That study at the University of Wisconsin led to the formalization of what's called attachment theory by Dr. John Bowlby, who argued that the quality or lack of quality of a mother's care for her children was predictive of what sort of personality someone would grow to have. And he thought there were three attachment styles. The first, was for people who were anxiously attached. These are people who were raised by parents who were demanding and critical. The result was that their children grew to be demanding themselves and overly vigilant. They feel chronically insecure and end up driving their romantic partners and friends away because of their constant demands for attention and reassurance. The second group were people who were avoidantly attached. These people didn't get enough loving attention. The the nurturing figure in childhood avoided them, resulting in people who were quickly overwhelmed by emotional intimacy and who always fear abandonment. Looking at myself, this one's my Achilles heel from my childhood. The third style was for people who were securely attached. These folks had nurturing figures in childhood who got it right, and their offspring grew to be trusting of others and relaxed. Now, in more recent years, there has come to be a theory that there might be a fourth attachment style called disorganized attachment. And this one is a mix of someone who has kind of the worst features of both anxiously and avoidant attachment styles. And its existence is controversial. Now, when most people learn about attachment theory, they can feel kind of hopeless. I mean, What can you do about something that supposedly determined a lot of your personality but resulted from decisions your mother made while you were an infant? But take heart. Your default attachment style may indeed be determined by your early childhood experiences, but you are not a static thing. 
when more modern researchers duplicated Dr. Harry Harlow's experiment with monkeys, they discovered that his results held up only if his monkeys were isolated. If the monkeys were put into groups with other monkeys and allowed to play and socialize over time, regardless of how they had been raised, their behavior changed in more adaptive ways. So it turns out that one's attachment style is multiply determined. Your early childhood learnings are very important and yeah, some people do not progress beyond them, but one can. You can have relationships with friends, work colleagues, romantic partners, and so on that teach you how to be securely attached regardless of what happened to you when you were an infant. And that's the good news. No matter how messed up your early childhood learnings were, you will have new experiences if you let yourself. You just have to let yourself. And this gets down to what one can actually do about one's attachment style. First, figure out what your default childhood attachment style is from the way you were raised. Self-reflection should do this for you. But then, many years ago, a writer named J. Martin Coley published a book that became a classic in the self-help positive thinking genre titled Your Greatest Power. The book proposes that every human being has access to a superpower. That superpower is the ability to make conscious choices. Too often, we see ourselves in the grip of forces we cannot control, like the way we were brought up and nurtured in our childhood. There's not a thing we can do about that. But ultimately, and this is the genius of Coe's book, ultimately, the past has no power to control our present except the power we give it by allowing it to influence how we behave in the present. And how we behave in the present is what determines our future. You can control with whom you associate yourself. When the emotionally injured monkeys were put in community with other monkeys, they learned new ways of relating. You can do the same by adjusting who you hang out with. The monkeys that did the best were put in a community with other monkeys who also were very adaptive in how they conducted their relationships. Now, sometimes when I'm working with someone who has gotten in trouble with an addiction, and I do need to add here that I am not an addictions therapist, and I do not do that sort of work, but I do sometimes help out therapists who do. When I'm helping someone who has that sort of problem, I always take the line that a person can't really change who they are unless they are also willing to change their friends. All my life, I've made it a point to associate with people with whom I felt connection and whom I could admire. When I was a boy struggling to overcome some of the mess my family had made for me, I found people who were part of a spiritual community and who were obviously people who had their stuff together. It would be too strong to say I became friends with those people, but I hung around and we became friendly. And one person in particular took me under her wing, and that's all I'll say about that. And that relationship turned me around completely. So too, when I became a philosopher in college, my first two degrees are in philosophy. When I became a clergy person, which is what my doctorate is in, ministry. When I became a hypnotist, when I became a martial artist, 
I didn't waste my time with posers or people who were as obviously messed up as I was. I figured out who the strong people were and tried to learn from them. I took their classes. I paid for their time and sat in their offices. I traveled in order to get to the best school or dojo. I made mistakes, but I learned new ways of being in the world. I used my greatest power. I chose to break with the way I was brought up. And you can too. Start by figuring out what your attachment style from childhood is and then make some decisions about it. You are a work in progress. You're not a done deal. By surrounding yourself with people who kind of have it together, you can become a better version of yourself. And that is wonderful. Hey, thank you for your time and attention today. I'll be back next week with another talk on a different subject. I'd like to invite you to join me. It does help me if you let others know about my videos, so please like, share, and subscribe. And if I can be of help to you, feel free to reach out. And until we're together again, have a great week.